today is on Wednesday. Today is on Wednesday and our devotion, our devotion even through the word of God is here. I would like us to start with the word of prayer. Jesus, we have uh, been blessed through your word starting on Monday. And Lord, your instruction has been clear that our true our worship to be qualified to be true it must be the worship that honors the sun because such is the era the period that we are in and so lord we want to thank you as we listen to this very reason that you give us through your word lord we humble ourselves to you and uh, seek that lord you minister to our souls this is our prayer of faith in jesus holy name amen so my brother my sister wherever you are wherever you are this morning i want to thank god because god has been ministering to us about true worship and uh, the reason and why we should purpose our worship especially on the upon the sun especially on honoring the sun is uh, because the sun has been revealed to us at a time like this and he says Messiah says that the time of uh, the times are coming and already they are here when he speaks to the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4 he says uh, the time has come the time is coming and that time is already here with us and that time that Jesus is speaking about is the period we are in we are in the messianic time where worship must be geared to honor the sun because of who the sun is in our lives as those who believe as his disciples what the sun is so the instruction has been very clear in the bible as we have uh, gone through the bible that uh, true worship must honor must honor the sun and yesterday we were speaking about we were speaking about uh, the humanity of Jesus Christ and his supremacy that supersedes all other that we read and all systems. That was the reason that we ought to purpose our worship on the Son, Jesus Christ. And on Monday, remember, we were speaking about his divinity, his deity, him being uh, shown uh, clearly uh, to, be, to be actually the beloved Son and the light that accompanied, that shone in his garments and throughout his face. And uh, Matthew chapter 17 has been uh, our, our, our scripture uh, the, where we've been drawing from and where we find a lot of uh, wealth and, and, and riches of uh, reason why we need to pay our worship to Jesus Christ. We give our worship to Jesus, Jesus Christ. I, as I was thinking about this, because another reason, the very last reason that I want to give us this morning is that Jesus, the humility that we see in Jesus Christ should be a reason, should uh, uh, be a reason for us to purpose our worship on him. Yeah, because imagine, as, as I was thinking about humility, the humility of Jesus, imagine that uh, you are the most supreme of all imagine that uh, you are clothed with the divinity or uh, your deity is divine you, you know you are you are divine in your in yourself H how it feels and how one would wallow in pride for and for uh, as you get to, to to know that you are the, the you're the most superior of all speak of the superiors we have seen in this mean those whom we have ever thought to be superior in this life and so there's a lot of pride that should come with that in a normal human human understanding but instead we see jesus possess the deepest sense of humility that can never be equated and the text that we've been reading matthew chapter 17 and verses 9 you will uh, realize this sense in this text and as they were coming down the mountain jesus commanded them tell no one the vision until the son of man 
is raised from from the dead on the mountain of trans transfiguration he dem demonstrates that you know after having experienced that glorious moment where the light and uh, shone throughout i mean over his garments and his face uh, and and peter even goes ahead and says that let us uh, make booths one for you one for moses one for elijah you see jesus would have chosen if at all he wasn't humble he would have chosen to bask in that glory and so that those boots would be made and so that he just be there but to, to remain on that mountain just experiencing that glory and all that but in this verses 9 we read that uh, and as they were coming down the mountain he decided to you know he resorted to, to coming down to walking down the mountain in other words it tells us that he went down leaving that glory behind he went down into into darkness into that valley below he went down, came out of that glorious, glorious presence that, that we see. And, and, and you see, that in itself shows how humble or his, the sense, the deepest sense of humility. He knows that there is some work to do. The work that he came for was to save humanity. And so there is need for him to come down, to leave all that glory, that is with him and just go down and continue his work before his time comes. And so remember his birth yesterday, we were speaking about his birth as uh, in a manger, that in as much as uh, it also showed his, hum it gives our human touch, him being the son of man born into this life, but it also shows us how humble uh, Jesus came into our life, into our world with a lot of humility imagine being born in that manger where there's a lot of saliva and and a very wet kind of grass that still lay lay there you know that is where our lord was born paul speaks to philippians in uh, philippians chapter 2 and verses 6 and 7 he says this about jesus who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And so that is what we see. You know, he takes the form, though he is in the form of God, he did not think as that to or to contend and 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 to uh, count that as being equal to Jesus to, to, to God I think that uh, you and myself would find or uh, that our human nature would find that we should grasp at, at, at it but you know he emptied himself and took a form of a servant that is what the Bible says and he was born in the likeness of men and that is why he finds reason to walk down to the valley, down to the dark valleys of this life to seek for us. That is why he would come out of the mountain of glory, of transfiguration, where there's a lot of basking in glory, but still resort to leave that glory to come for us because he took the, 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 the very lowest form of a servant such that he would serve you and myself and for me i think that in itself is reason enough why we need to give our worship to him because he is that servant humble servant that came for our souls that came to save us that all those who believe in him will not perish he says tell no one about this vision not until the son of man will have uh, uh, raised from 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 death tell no one about it he's not into the business of fame so that uh, it will be known that this guy is full of glory this guy can be transfigured you know tell no one that is how humble he is that is how he partakes of his ministry and duty amongst uh, sons of men like himself with a lot of humility why do we, should we worship jesus 
I think that is a question that every disciple of Jesus Christ need to find and need to answer. Why should we worship Jesus? If you do not have, have answer for, for that kind of a question, if that question does not have an answer, then I think we should not be Christians, or rather disciples of Jesus Christ. If you do not have reason to worship Jesus, then I think then you, we, we are not disciples of Jesus. We are not Christians because we worship him because of his divinity. We worship because of his supremacy. We worship because of his humanity. And we worship him because of his humility. Romans chapter 12, as we wind up, and what I would like to wind up as well, Romans chapter 12, and verses, verses 1 and 2. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, Paul says, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, that they be holy and acceptable to God, that this, which is your spiritual worship, and verses 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to, to me, actually verse 2 is the end, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove that it is the will of God. What is the will of God? What is good and acceptable and perfect. And so that is, those are the words that I would also want to, to finish with. As we worship the Lord, let us remember that uh, your spiritual worship should be presenting your body as a living sacrifice, giving your body to the Lord, making every attempt to walk in holiness and uh, doing that which is acceptable before the Lord, because in that is worship of, in truth and in spirit. And so we know that we worship our Savior because of his true nature that the Bible reveals to us. He's a supreme God. He's a divine God. He is God who, is whole, who also possesses hu human, uh, the nature of a human being. He has humility with him. May God bless his word and may God bless you as we continue deliberating and thinking on reasons and why our worship should purpose on Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's pray. Dear Father, dear Lord Jesus, we are humbled this, this morning to learn that yes, Lord, your humility is reason for us to worship you. Now, minister, your humility that we may understand that we may also be servants, even as you are servant, the chief servant that we ever know, servant leader, God with us, but also a humble servant. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Messiah. Now we bless you, minister, your word to us still. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.